Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. As you know, IDA 8.4 has been recently released. There are so many bug fixes, new features, and improvements to existing features. I'm going to select some of the new features and mention some of the improvement to existing features in this video. With that, let's get started. One of the newest things is the unification of the type information storage. And this new system is called ASMTIL. It's a way to unify the structures and enums and local types into a single user interface and a single underlying storage system. So let me show you the difference. So here I have either 8.4 on the left hand side and 8.3. Before we had three different kind of ways to introduce types. We have structures, enumerations, and local types. If we look at the Shift F9 window, this is how we're used to look at structures and so on. Shift F10, we have the enums, and Shift F1, we have the local types. And we can have a relationship between the local types and the structures window by selecting synchronization. So if we introduce something here in the local type, pressing insert and introduce the type, for example, Right now, it's not going to show in either structures window because it's not synchronized. But once I press enter, right click, synchronize, etc., now it will be available here. Let me show you now the new system where everything is unified. Now we have the local types which has been improved. So this is the local types in IDA 8.4 as opposed to this older UI. Look at this UI as we showed you just earlier. We can't see much really, it's just maybe barely the name and don't see any definitions. So this is the new UI. Now with this new UI, we can represent both local types and structures and enums. So let's re-add the ABC type here in IDA. So all I have to do is press insert and this is the new interface now. When I'm in the local types and I add a type, I get to select between is it a structure, is it an enum, or is it the C syntax. Which basically, when we look at C syntax, it was the same in the older IDA when we add a type in the local types window. And for the enums, it's going to be the same if we're going to add an enum and older IDA, they're also the same. In a sense, this unified UI, which will support all three kinds, this is the individual in older IDA. Now the same UI has been moved here in the newer IDA. Same for those buttons like add standard enums and by symbol name and so on. Same stuff, the same exists here. And we can also go for the C syntax directly. So let's just paste that type I created earlier. So now look how it looks. This is how it looks versus the older IDA just showing it like that and so on and now I can see it nicely as if it was a high level structure I can see the offsets as if it was a structure window and everything is nice and unified and also it looks like C code it's because I can change the representation in the edit menu or right click I can select switch between C like format or not so I'm gonna switch away from it and now it looks like the structure window here ABC, we have the name and the type and so on. Now, notice if we go to the same one in older IDA, ABC, we don't see D, 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 D. We see higher level types that are equivalent to the lower level types. So int, size of int is size of D, D. But now here, we don't necessarily have, is it signed, unsigned, etc. So we can still annotate the same way, by the way. So we can still go to the edit and change the representation. So let's say I want this to be decimal. And now I have another annotation next to it. And those here, if I press decimal H, look how it used to be. Base 10 changes slightly here. And now in the newer interface, it shows us like this with a nice annotation, which is equivalent to that comment here. So that's a nice way to unify lower level type representation and higher level representations. Same for enum. So if I press insert to add and we can add an enum, same options we're familiar with. And here I can add members the same way, add member, and they look nicer. So if I go to the enum here, they do like C syntax versus assembly. So let's switch to non-C format, and now it looks like the older IDA. So right click, 
C-like format. So this is the new UI. And there's so many annotations. For example, we can look them up in the help file. Uh, these annotations, for example, if we select the field representation is binary, we see underscore bin. If we press Ctrl O for offsets, we see the offset and what kind of offset and so on. So we can always go to the set function item type to see more details about those annotations. So here I'm gonna make this one hex, for example, I pressed Q and it's annotated. Let's go press Q here and you see it's different. But I do like the way it looks here. It looks nice. We can still use the same shortcut. So this is nice. Hex rays made sure that if you still want or used to the older Shift F9 window, like the keys, uh, expand, shrink structure, define, undefine, you have the same. So for example, if I wanna use the same methodology as before to add a field between A and B, in the older structure window here in IDA, I had to go to where I want to insert and expand. So I'm gonna expand by four, Control E, type four. Now I have the gap, uh, I added the field C. I can do the same as well, so edit, insert gap. Now it's renamed from extend to insert gap. I'm going to add four. Now I have four space gap. Now I can pr press the same keys like D, for example, to make data types, or I can press Alt D as well to directly pick the type. So now here, if I say D word, I did the same by using the same hotkeys, define, undefine, shrink. So the shrink and expand has been renamed to insert gap, remove gap, as opposed to here, expand structure and shrink structure. So other than that, just having this new representation, we can stop using the shift F9 and shift F10 structures and enums. And just a unified interface. Another feature I want to draw your attention to is the new plugin called Create Signature. This is not necessarily very much spelled out as a big new feature, but in my opinion, it's very, very handy and saves you time from having to create your own signature from scratch using the Flirt tool. So the Shift F5 window opens the signatures window uses the flirt technology which is fast library identification and recognition technology and now if we have a database we can quickly create our own signature and then load it into another database like this we can identify symbols i'm gonna make a quick demo out of that okay so for my demo suppose i spend some time to reverse engineer this version of this program for this example supposedly I want to just create signatures for those two functions and then maybe load another database and try to see if we can match the signatures and give them a new name. So these two functions I want to create signatures for. We're going to go to the menu and say produce file. I'm going to say create signature or control shift F12. And now here I have the option to create a new SIG file. We can give it a name, description for that signature file, and also we can pick either for the whole program. Now, I don't think it's very useful to go for the whole program because it's going to capture library functions and, and so on. Maybe we don't want that. We just want user functions. So either select functions or uh, go for all, but maybe ideally just be selective. So I'm just going to create for those two and say, OK. And here maybe we can say, for example, Wismo 64 version 1.0 signatures, for example. And go for it. Now I have a new signature has been created for two functions. Now that I have the signature, suppose I have another binary version. Supposedly this version is a newer version. And you just disassembled it. And you don't have those functions that you create signatures for. But you know those functions will exist in this new version. So what you do, you will go to the regular signatures window but this time either lets us load signatures from arbitrary location just quick before we had to go to the ida installation folder sig and install our signature somewhere like in the pc for example here are all the pc related signature files but now with the newer ida we simply open this if we have a signature file somewhere else we simply go to that signature window and say apply what we'll get, the same old dialog with the list of stuff in the standard location, but now we have a new button, which is the load signature, which will let us load from arbitrary location. And here we have loaded it, and it has been applied, and we found 
two functions which are the same functions we create signatures for the adjust privilege and do a mute so these are ported signatures now as i said historically you'll have to use the ida support tools to create signatures so if i go to the ida sdk i did download all the tools we have here the flare tool set so flare fast library identification and so on and it has many tools like for creating sig signatures, sig make, and for dumping signatures. What I'm going to do is simply call the dump sync from the tools in the SDK and just show you the contents of a signature file. So real quick, I have that signature file, which is tiny because just have little information for two functions and let's just run the dumper. And that dumper will create a pattern file. And here we have, this is how it looks. So, for example, adjust privilege. This is the pattern. These are wild cards. And this is another symbol. This is the pattern and so on. So that's the same logic that the standalone SIGMIC will use. But now it's very much convenient and also doesn't require library files like the standalone tools. So if you have a database that you annotated, rename stuff, this is convenient as it is built in. Very, very useful. Another feature I'd like to mention as well, because it was not visible so this is not necessarily new but it wasn't necessarily visible for users it was just an action with hotkeys so what are find register definition and find register use now they are exposed in the search menu so here we have all, both of them register definition and register use let me show you for example we're working in database and we see some register for example we want to know how this register is defined we know it's being used right now so we can now go to the search and say alt shift up or find register definition it will find where that register has been defined so invoking it and this is where it was here now, if I was already here and want to see the users, now forget about the highlights. Suppose the listing is too big, you can't see everything. Now, we can go and do the other functionality, which is use. Now, just I'll shift down, take me all the uses, and it will stop at the next definition. Another feature as well I'd like to mention is the environment variable. It can set environment variables under, for debuggers from within IDA. Now, before... If I wanted to add environment variable to the process I'm debugging, normally I'd have that process inherit the environment variables from the parent. Whether if it was remote debugging, before running the remote debugger server, I would set the environment variables, run the debug server, and then run the process. It will inherit from the parent the same environment variables. Now we don't have to go through this dance. We can simply specify the environment variables directly from IDA. So for this example, I'm going to disassemble the command line tool, CMD, and I'm going to insert two environment variables separated by semicolon. And this should be enough. So all I have to do is just simply run that process. And we should be able to see those two environment variables. We have one more option, very important, which is merge environments. It is best to check it. It's not on by default. When you select it, it will merge your variables instead of completely clearing the whole environments and put these ones. So it's preferable to merge new environment variables with the existing ones. Okay, let it run. And all right, so here if I type set my env, here, here it is, it is set. And if I set set and it is set. So that's pretty much useful as you need it. For example, some processes require special environment variables before they run. You might want to configure IDA for those processes like that. Another thing I want to mention, now IDA supports Python 3.12. IDA 8.3 wouldn't support it. So let me show you. We go to IDA and we run the IDA Python switch. So here we just simply run the IDA PY switch. And what do I have here? My default one is pointing to 3.12. So I already selected 3.12. I could select 3.11 or 3.9. So it is selected as 3.12. If I go to the older IDA, so let's say IDA 8.3 and just simply try to run it, it will complain. It's not going to work just because it uses older syntax and so on. So if you want to use Python 3.12, now you can use it with IDA 8.4. Now what I want to show you next is the UI changes to the graph overview. So we have a new 
crosshair for the graph overview let me show you so let's say uh, this one here and let's go to the largest function in this program so let's just sort by len and jump somewhere complicated press spacebar to switch to graph overview and what we didn't have before is this crosshair setting here so we can quickly see where we are additionally in the graph overview now we should see if we have a selected node we should see it here now it's not going to be very visible in this complicated graph so let me pick something less complicated just to show you the selected uh, node okay that's good enough so for example here and here now we can see those two are selected something new as well is now you can select edges so now here it's in brown it shows all right so this is the new graph overview of course the crosshair will make sense if you have a large graph or lots of basic blocks and finally i want to go over just high level stuff just to mention so we have a lot of ios improvements arm processor improvements we have a new rust improvements as well a new rust plugin so if you work with rust you should appreciate that here is a major feature as well and of course lots of bug fixes and so on all the arm features so make sure you check the full list of what's new okay so that's it for today i did cover the major features of course not everything i highlighted the difference between the older type system the shift f9 shift f10 window and how you can work equally in the newer asm till window or the newer local type window as well i mentioned some important features like create signatures python 3.12 support and newer plugins like the rust plugin or the create signature plugin and the various arm processor improvements and so on okay thank you and i'll see you next time